Hey gang, welcome back to the Sled Pack channel. Today's project is to install about 80 linear feet of crown molding on our kitchen slash dining room remodel. We're set up over here with our chop saw. I made these wings on a previous project and dug them out. And we just have everything screwed down to that temporary ladder you probably saw in our beam video. We made a great workbench out here. So we got this set up and then over here is our new saw stop because we have to make a little jig. So let's go over here and talk about that jig. It's a beautiful windy day here in Southern Louisiana. So we're using the, uh, is it the wind effects mode on the GoPro? We, we have wind reduction on. Wind yeah. reduction, sorry. So we're gonna try it out today. So hopefully it doesn't come through in the microphone. So this is a, a sample of our crown molding. We're matching the existing crown molding in the house. So we were able to find the perfect match. And Let's talk about a few things first. So this crown molding, this is the orientation it would go in. This would be your ceiling. This would be your wall. This angle here is called the spring angle. This is probably 38 degrees, but don't, don't worry about all that. We're gonna show you how to, how to do this. So come on here, Jordan. So we, we cut a piece of our crown and it's upside down. And we rotated it we rotated it until this edge was was flush here and this represents the wall and the, and the table actually represents the ceiling and we determined that it goes right there and we made a mark there and there and it turns out that this is two inches and that this one's two and five eighths so we're going to make a jig and it's going to help us do three things so let's go over here to the table saw and we're going to make that thing just using a piece of three quarter inch plywood it's not important what you use um, we're at the new saw stop we love it absolutely love it it's fantastic i i keep pulling out my tape measure to set the fence and i realize i don't need it because i've got this cool gauge right here so a long time ago it's before youtube before all that um i learned a lot about table saws by reading uh, books believe it or not <laughs> we read books back then so there's one by uh, he was a furniture builder in kentucky or tennessee i think named, his name's kelly mailer and he always recommended when you set up a table saw whether it's permanently in a shop or temporarily outside orient it so that your back is uh, Orient it so that anybody who might approach you can't come around the back and possibly startle right. you. They got to approach you from the front. Yeah, so if, if I was in a shop and my shop door was over there, I'd want this table saw facing that way. I wouldn't want the door behind me. You know, there's too much going on. You, you wouldn't want somebody to come up, tap you on the shoulder while you're using the saw. So right now I've got it set up right by this beautiful rose bush. Sure, so, but if they were going to startle you, you'd want to be startled while using a saw stop. stop. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> so let's cut this real fast. Let's clean that up and trim it to size. Now we'll make our two inch leg. Now we've got an L that matches the dimensions of the crown. Remember we had the crown right here, upside down. Put the leg there and it's the same thing. Now let's cut it to 32 inches in length. That's going to help us do one more little operation pretty quickly. All right, let's go inside and we'll show you how this guy works. All right, here's how this thing works. So I've marked it wall, so I know it always goes this way. I'm going to put it up here and we'll make a mark. 
just like that. And what that's going to help me do is orient the crown. Roll the crown, so to speak. So I know exactly where to put it. I just have to put it between those two lines, just like that. And I know it's perfect. Now the other thing we're going to do is we go around the room. We're going to locate all the studs and rafters. All right, so there's a stud. And I'm just going to make a mark. And I can tell, it looks like right there is a joint. Oops, sorry. Now the reason it's 32, I can do that. And there should be one there. And I know there's one here because there's a huge, huge header over this window. And I can even put it on that one. There should be a rafter there. There should be a rafter there. So let's just test it. This wall is a little... Uh, the framing inside of it's weird. Yes, because we had that flitch beam in there and all that. So we know there's a stud here because we made our drywall end on a stud. And then the other one should be right on the side of that box. Okay, so that one's good. It'll probably take just about five minutes to go around this room, but it's time well spent. We know exactly where to nail everything, and we know exactly where to put our crown. Hey, we're done marking the walls and the ceiling for all of our crown, but before we go outside and start cutting crown, we wanna show you a couple things inside. You may have noticed during the time lapse that all the walls are white. So um, today's Wednesday, we textured Monday, and yesterday I came in and shot a coat of primer on everything. Uh, this is what we used. Is it showing up? Yeah. And then, uh, so almost, it almost took five gallons. I was kind of surprised. Right, and the boxes are nice and clean? Yep, because we, we put a piece of paper in there. The reason I prime all the walls, because even though they're behind cabinets, is uh, you ever done a demolition and you take the cabinets down and the drywall's moldy because it was never sealed? Hmm. That's why I seal it. If this ever were to get wet, the drywall has a fighting chance. And then to me, uh, when we put up the crown and caulk it, it's a little easier to run your finger along here. And if you've done this a lot, you know what I'm talking about, and then you're, you cut your skin open and you gotta switch fingers. It's a little easier to run your finger against a nice prime coat than it is rough texture. Um, just talking about texture in that hopper, I wanna go back and uh, talk about that for a minute. A guy in the comments mentioned the hopper. So what happened at the rental yard was a new employee charged me the purchase price of the hopper and he charged me the rental price of the air pump. They got that fixed, but while we were talking about it, he said, you can just use your own compressor. And then I remembered a long time ago, I actually tried that, but my little compressor won't keep up. If you had a small job, it would certainly work. Or if you were willing to wait for the compressor to catch up, it would work. I just didn't want to, you know, be here spraying and then have to stop, wait for my compressor, and then keep going. I right. just wanted to go. So That'd be like almost painting and stopping like mid stroke. Yeah, I wanted to be consistent, but that is an option for you. You can buy a cheap hop hopper or rent just the hopper only and use your own compressor. Another thing on texture, sometimes when you're doing drywall work, matching the old texture can be the hardest part of the whole job. 30, 40 years ago, they were using brushes and doing scallops and swirls and uh, homemade stuff. So I remember once I was trying to match a really rough texture in a house. It was so rough, we'd use it to scratch our backs. And I bought all this stuff at the, I went everywhere trying to buy all these things that promised to match the texture. Well, none of them worked. So what I ended up doing, I got all the bags that all that stuff came in and I crumbled them all up and I just dabbed it. And it was a perfect match. So sometimes you got to do that. But anyway, we love the way this came out and we're excited we're, to paint it. Yep. So we have one more thing that this is going to help us with. So let's go outside and do that. 
So our jig is going to help us do one more thing, and that's going to be to set up the crown stop. The crown stop is going to allow us to put the crown in here just like that, and we're done. We don't have to mess with it at all as far as this way. We just drop it in, and we're ready to go. So since we know this is already the width of the crown at the ceiling, we're going to put this in here. Put that against that. Now we're done with that. So one more thing we're going to do. The crown stop obscures the miter scale. So we're going to make our own. There's 90. That's 45, I'm sure. Now your crown stop, if you do this, has to be wide enough so you don't cut through it right here. Because you want this board to be straight. Hey, we got this piece of crown put up. So we'll walk you through a few things. You can see we put those are, uh, 18 gauge, two inch finishing nails into the stud, into our ceiling joists. That worked out great. We're a little bit above our line here. And that's because we're matching the existing scat, the existing crown right here. So we had to roll this up to match this, and then we rolled it back down as we went that direction to get back on our line. So if you remember in the, go back and watch our demo video if you haven't seen it already. And this is simply quarter inch paneling. Actually, I think it's less than quarter. It's probably three sixteenths or a fat three sixteenths. It was, um, in this complete area. So we left it here, and this is half inch drywall. So we knew we had this step to deal with. So we, we cut a piece of our new crown at a 45, but it didn't match this angle from the old crown. So we actually had kept all the trim we took off, and we found a piece of crown that from the original job that matched the angle perfectly right here. So we, we put that there, and then we had to cut a piece here to come out this way, 5 sixteenths of an inch. And then we went to the right, and that looks great. Once it's all caulked and puttied, it'll, it'll look great. Yes, sir. Um, I was going to talk about something else right here. Oh, so to finish off the raw edge of this drywall, we use what's called L bead or L mold. It looks just like the corner bead that we put on on the pony wall but one leg is short. And if you can come around here, you can see how nice that finished off, Jordan. And we kind of struggled with where to make this transition. We have an upper cabinet here, so we needed it to be towards the door, but we didn't want to have to reframe or recase this door. So we did it right there. And we're on top of a, uh, a king stud, so it worked out great. So now we're ready over here to put up a 16 footer. And now it can really fly. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five more pieces. Yep, we'll get it done quick. Yep. So let's go outside and cut that. Now here's a tip for all you solo DIYers if you're hanging 16 footers alone, even 12 footers. I try to get 16 footers whenever I can. And um, like in this area, we're only gonna have one butt joint. 16 footers the way to go and then we're mitering the corners i usually cope today we're mitering so don't give me any grief over it okay <laughs> all right here we go this is a 16 footer on what i've done i just put a screw above my pencil line see right there about midway and there's one over here it could be a nail and uh, they actually make a little hanger that you can use to put there but I'm going to show you the, the concept. Right, here we go, 16 footer by yourself. I think I'm just going to have to go down there and push towards me a little. There we go. And that looks great.
And that's as far as I'm going to go because I have to remove that screw and roll the crown down to my line again. Now we don't have any blocking here above this. Our joists are running this way. It's pretty tight, but I'm just going to do what they call cross nail it. One that way, one that way, and stitches it together into the drywall. So then when I come down to my line, my crown is gonna cover the screw hole. Here's another little advantage of using that L fence we made or that L jig. So in the corners, I make an intersecting line. And then all I have to do, I just measured it right here. And that's the length of this piece. Uh, we actually already measured it. It's exactly 134. So let's go to the saw and cut it. All right, guys, all the crown is up. It looks great. We want to paint tomorrow, so we're going to caulk today. This is what we use, DAP Alex Plus. We have all the crown caulked. It looks fantastic. It just makes it all blend together. We will uh, fill all the nail holes and then we're gonna give that a coat of paint tomorrow. So we'll see you then. Hey guys, it's the next day. We're painting the crown. This is what we're using. PPG uh, interior semi-gloss, their speed hide. And I had it color matched. So let's go inside and see how close they got it. Hey guys, we have our first coat on all the new crown. And if you can go up here, Jordan, they color matched it perfectly. Um, <laughs> sorry, this is new paint and that's the original paint. It looks great. You probably can't see it on the camera and we can't hardly tell right here. And then right here, our little 5 16 offset came out perfectly, love that. It actually picks up the one we have over here at the fireplace. So tomorrow, we're gonna to be giving all the crown in this room a second coat so it all matches perfectly. And then also, in our next video, we're going to be putting the two cabinets. Uh, there's one here, and there's one here, and the range goes in the middle. We're gonna fasten the cabinet to the slab, fasten the cabinet to the wall, and get this countertop, and this countertop, and that countertop all on the same plane. We wanna make sure we do that now so that when we set them all, we're all on the same plane. If you're wondering why we're doing finished painting at this stage of the project, there's a good reason for that. So be sure you stay tuned and we're gonna show you in the next video. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that notification bell, hit the subscribe button. If you're not already a, subs a subscriber, give us a thumbs up and leave us some great comments. We love the comments you guys are putting down there below for us and we'll see you on the next one.